So I bet you've been to barbecue restaurants and you've ordered burnt ends. Have I got a surprise for you. Hi, I'm Jill from thisoldgal.com and today I'm in the kitchen with Jill. We are going to make burnt ends in the pressure cooker and we're going to crisp them up. Yes, we're going to crisp them up. But we're also going to use chuck instead of brisket. It's a cheaper cut of meat and you can buy it in bulk when it's on sale. So stay with me and watch how we make Instant Pot Poor Man's Burnt Ends and how I crisp it up right in the pressure cooker. Crisp, caramelized, bubbling, charred. Come with me and we're gonna cook it right up. So you can see there aren't many ingredients to the burnt ends. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is take some liquid smoke, put it right into the pressure cooker. All right, then we're gonna take some garlic. Don't worry about mincing it, just give it a good smash and put it right into the pot. It's gonna add some nice flavor. Then we're gonna add some apple cider vinegar. Add that right into the pot. You'll want a well marbled piece of meat and you're gonna to wanna to cut it into about one and a half inch chunks. Now, if the meat has any kind of big old chunks of fat, just cut that out. We're gonna add some garlic powder. We're gonna add a bunch of pepper, freshly ground black pepper, like that. And we're going to add about a tablespoon of kosher salt. Now, if you're using sea salt, you're going to want to use half the amount. So about a tablespoon. You just massage it in. That's all you do. Massage it into the meat really well. All right, so now all you do is, after you've mixed it, you've got your meat all mixed in nicely like that, we're going to add the meat just right into the pot. So add it right in. My hands are filthy. Do me a favor, Ed, put the top on for me and set it for four minutes. Put the lid on, lock it in position, make sure the pressure relief valve is closed. Pressure cook and set it for four minutes. Perfect. And, and there you go. There you go. All right, so while the pressure is releasing, we are going to mix up the barbecue sauce. All right, we're going to want to add some barbecue sauce into a bowl. Make sure you use a bowl that's big enough that your meat will fit in. Okay, so there's some barbecue sauce. Now, I make mine, but you can use whatever brand you like, and I'll recommend some brands that I like, and I'll put them in the recipe post. And we're going to mix it with some brown sugar, just like that. Nice and sweet. I'm just going to whisk that up. Can you see it's nice and whisked? Okay, it sounds like the pressure is finished releasing and we're going to be able to take off the lid, just like that. All right, open it away from you. you want to do something with that? Thanks. Now you can see in here that the meat is nicely cooked. There's a lot of liquid. Don't worry about the liquid. What you want to do is turn off your pressure cooker. Make sure you turn it off. I'm going to unplug mine. All right, so now you're going to take the meat from the pot. You don't want to get any juice in there, just the meat, and you're going to put it right into your barbecue sauce. All right, so we're going to mix the barbecue sauce now. I'm just using my whisk. You could grab a spoon if you want, make it easier, but since I've already got this dirty, and it works just as well. So we're going to mix this up. Okay, so now I've got it mixed up nicely. So you're going to want to, I'm using the Milty Crisp Lid. So I'm taking a long-legged trivet, I'm putting it right into the pot, and then I'm going to take the crisping basket and put that into the pot, just like that. And now we're going to put the meat with the barbecue sauce right in. You want a little bit of barbecue sauce left over so that you can baste it. We're going to do a little bit of a cook with this first before we actually crisp it, just so the barbecue sauce kind of penetrates and it adds another layer of flavor. All right, so all the meat's in here. 
All right. So now, may have a napkin. So now we're going to take the milky crisp lid and we're going to put it right onto the pot, and then we're going to plug it in. You don't want to make sure the handle is down. So for this now, we're going to set the timer for eight minutes, and we're going to set the temperature. We're going to do this low, as I said, just for a few minutes at 300 degrees, and we're going to let it cook. So we're going to do about four minutes on each side. So we're going thing, and we just want to mix it up a little bit. You don't want it to caramelize too much now. You, you're basically just kind of cooking in the flavor. Now you see the meal thing will reset itself. So change the time to four minutes. Like that. Now what you're going to want to do while this is cooking, take a little more brown sugar, just a little bit, a couple of teaspoons is all you need and mix it in. Because when we baste it and then we're going to turn up the temperature, you want it to really caramelize and crisp, just like a real burnt ends. All right, now it's just about finished. There we go. We're going to lift the lid. And you can see the meat looks awesome. You can see the barbecue sauce has cooked in, but it's not bubbling yet and it's not charred. Now we're going to char it. So we're going to take some barbecue sauce that has the extra sugar in it and just paint it over it. Just get it all in there. Just like that. And this is so delicious. It's cheaper than brisket. Usually it goes on sale a lot, so grab some when it's on sale. Okay, now I've just done one side, so we're going to caramelize the first side. I'm going to put the crisp lid back on, and I'm going to set it for, let's see, the temperature. We're going to go up on the temperature this time. We're going to go all the way to 450, and the time is at 4, it doesn't matter what time, you just want to put it on and watch it. When it starts to, to bubble and start to char, we're going to stop it and we're going to flip it over. All right, it's been about three minutes, so I'm going to take the lid off and I'm going to flip the meat and put some sauce on the other side. You can see how it's starting to caramelize and, be, be, and uh, get crispy. We want it to be a little crispy. All right, so flip them over like that. And we're going to give it one more basting of the extra sweet sauce. Oh, it's sticky already. It feels wonderful in there. Nice and sticky. All right, so we're going to put the sauce on the meat like that. It's just the right amount of sauce. All right, so once it's all on, we're going to let it go one more time. Put it on there crisp lid back on, push it down. It's already set for 450 and the time is set for four minutes. We'll just push it. Won't take the four minutes, but it's got the extra in case you want yours more charred. That way you won't have to stop and restart it. So just keep an eye on it. And when it's perfect, take the lid off and you're ready to eat. Three, two, one. Here we go. Perfect. Isn't that great? Can you believe how easy that was? You know, it's really hot in California today. So imagine standing outside in front of the hot grill with the coals and starting the fire, the whole, the whole kit and caboodle and cooking this. Not to mention it would take hours and hours smoking the meat first so it slow cooks and then charring it up. We did it really fast in the Instant Pot and we crisped it up in the, using the crisp lid. Now, if you don't have, have a crisp lid, which you need to get one, I'm going to link below where you can get it. You can always put it into your air fryer if you have one, or you can put it under the broiler. So this is so delicious. Now, I made my own barbecue sauce, but you can buy some. So let me taste it. Oh, wow. Look at it. It's nice and charred. It deli looks delicious. Mmm. This is so good. Mmm. You know, we, I'm using a well-marbled piece of meat. So what happens is 
the marbling gets nice and crisp and tender and juicy. Oh, it's so delicious. Ed, you want some? I'm surprised he's not here yet. He must not have been around. Go ahead. Try it. See how you like. Oh, it's so delicious. For all you guys out there, you know that we'd be the ones that's hanging over the grill sweating. That's true. Ed usually goes outside and grills. So if you have any questions, just mm. shoot me a message. I will answer them, and I'm going to explain how to do everything in my blog post at thisoldgal.com. Everything I've done, measurements, everything will be right in the blog post. How is it, Ed? Wow, this is really, really Is good. it good? Yeah, you're going to love a burn-ins. <laughs> Burn ends at a restaurant are pretty darn expensive. Thank you guys so much for joining us today on In the Kitchen with Jill. Now, you can follow me if you'd like on Fa on uh, Pinterest, Instagram, and Twitter. I'm at This Old Gal Cooks, Facebook This Old Gal, of course, and my blog, ThisOldGal.com. Don't forget to tell us what you think in the comments. Click on the like buttons, thumbs up, and also hit that bell, that subscribe bell, and follow us on YouTube. Thanks, you guys. We will see you again next time on In the Kitchen with Jill. Bye. And don't forget to tell us how much you love your burn-ins. <laughs> hey, everybody. Ed here. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and follow us on social media. We'll see you in the next video.